All right, so I want to share with you a a feeling that that I recommend, and you know, <coughs> for for most players, and you know, I in the player bundle, uh, I I and most of you that are in the player bundle know this. I, I really get players to try to exaggerate the high finish. The, the if, if you're not in the player bundle, it's the video where we talk about finishing big here in the course. I like for players to practice that exaggeration. And it is an exaggeration, but I like for them because you know players that drag the bat, they're not just out of the top of the swing, their hands are dropping and their elbow is coming down. And that's the problem. The problem is, is a global thing, where the energy is and where the energy is going to go. And, um, and, and so if a player doesn't understand where to take the energy, you're, gonna, you're bound to repeat a lot of the same problems. And so I like to encourage of players working up to this exaggerated position through the ball. So the top hand arm fully extended, barrel above the hands is a stopping point. And um, now there's but there's problems that can come with this, right? So if the interpretation of the player is, all right, in order to get up to this high finish, I've got to swing up to that. That's the wrong idea. And I'll show you, you know, why. But what I do to combat that is the first goal for a hitter has to be i got to get through the ball and then have the presence of mind of getting everything uh, okay, so we don't want the player getting the cart before the horse when they're using that finished big idea of trying to get up to that point. They got to stay through the ball, then get up to that point. So I use this little contraption here. Um, I have a, uh, you don't have to worry about the setup here because you're going to be there and holding this. I don't have anybody to hold this for me, right? So um, it's a PVC pipe. I don't recommend PVC pipes on in this drill because you don't want a player afraid to hit the obstruction, right? It seems like a good idea. But you don't want a player to be timid when they're doing it. That You want them to be relaxed and just try to avoid hitting the obstruction. So my recommendation is use a swimming pool noodle or an, some insulation tubing. Something that's just enough when they hit it, it'll, they'll know that they hit it and, um, and not, be, not be scared to death. So uh, I'll show you some different angles here. But this, this setup is about four inches in front of the tee right out in front of the tee and probably a couple of inches above the top of the ball. And really what I give players from a dynamically balanced position, I just give them one simple goal. I say, look, do not hit my obstruction, right? Hit through the ball and just avoid hitting the obstruction. <coughs> and what this promotes, right, is number one, the idea for players that are finishing high and finishing big is that I've got to get through the ball first. The other thing it does, it teaches players a basic lesson of what it means to create backspin, Right, a lot of kids are just hitting at balls, and and majority majority of twelve and unders when they're doing tee work, they're creating even their line drives that are going straight. They're creating top spin line drives that look good in a cage, but what the hell they'll interpret in a game is um, <coughs> humpback liners. They won't be driving balls. They'll just kind of their infield fly ball or just an infield line drive basically that kind of goes out of the infield. That's their best case scenario because they're practicing topspin. And when you see your players hitting balls on a tee and they're at the point of – so they hit a line drive or something like this, right, and their barrel almost instantly is going in a different direction, you run the risk of being what people will call a cage hitter at some point, right, where they do well and you're like, I don't understand the problem. They hit balls really good on a tee and all this. Well, I've learned that uh, that if, you, if your ball flight and your barrel path on a tee are not doing something similar right after the point of contact or at least a frame or two of video after the point of contact, you're probably not practicing something that's going to translate well in a game, no matter how pretty the swing looks. <laughs> this is the other thing. It doesn't matter. Your mechanics can be – you can look like Albert Pujols, but if you're not doing Albert Pujols things on a tee as far as how you move the bat through the ball, it doesn't matter what your elbow shapes were, man. It really doesn't. So this promotes, right, in order to miss the obstruction, you got to stay through. you got to stay behind the ball a little bit more there, right? And this, uh, this extension point that I'm getting to is not very natural for me. It's a very low extension point. Uh, and ultimately, my extension is going to come up here, but this feeling of staying through, and you see my, the barrel still below my hands like that, that's a necessary feeling to understand. That's not, that doesn't mean that when we go to a game, you're going to see that. But if you don't know how to do that, you're probably not going to be a, as good a hitter as you can. Like most kids, automatically their extension point wants to go up here, right? They don't stay through the ball well enough. So this is another way to encourage more through, okay? And then I like for players to combine this, hey, don't hit my hit stick or whatever's out there. <coughs> I say, and then I want you to combine it with that exaggerated high finish because I want a player 
that's practicing this high finish to know that the goal is not just going up to the high finish. I got to go through the ball first and then get up to the high finish. So again, the goal, don't hit the hit stick. That's the drill, all right? So I'm going to show you some different angles so you can see how this is set up. So over here behind, this is the catcher's view over here on the left. You don't want to do what I did here. You see how the PVC pipe is angled down? That's because it's on a weight like this over here. But you want to hold it parallel to the ground, as parallel to the ground as you can get it, and just have it a couple of inches above the top of the ball. The other thing is, is you don't want this to go in front of the player's hand path, right? We want This is just something to let them know what their barrel is doing through the zone. So we don't want to obstruct their hand path. So we're going to have it a few inches past the tee. Now, you want to go past the tee a little bit because um, if, if you put it like, for instance, if you stop it right here where the ball is, kids will figure out creative ways to avoid hitting the stick in the wrong way. So you want this to be an obstruction, <laughs> right? So maybe leave it a few inches past the tee, okay? Over here is a, from the right-handed batter's box. You can see that I've got it a few inches out in front, right? And... Um, and this is, you know, again, to promote the barrel staying through, right, instead of getting up too early, right? This will almost always, if I'm doing this on a regular basis, right at the point of contact, it's good as much as it'll look like, oh, that's going to make my kid hit a lot of high fly balls out of the yard. It will not as a practice on a tee. If you, if you build in top spin approach, you, no matter if it looks like they're going to hit balls in the air, and no matter if you hit balls in the air on a tee or not, it's going to turn in, in a game. It's not going to translate as the right spin. It's going to translate as a, as a top spin humpback line, or best case scenario, I think, for, would be that. Right? So you want to promote the right kind of uh, dress. So if, you're ha if your player's having a hard time with this, um, and they're, you know, they just can't, you know, they're, they're hitting balls and they just can't avoid hitting the hit stick. Well, I, I take this back. I think you should start this way no matter what. I would start with this setup, this contraption, without a ball on the tee at first. All right, and just say, look, I want you to take some cuts here and I want you to go through, avoid hitting my obstruction, whatever you're holding, and I want you to work up to our exaggerated high finish. <clears throat> and, um, and see how they do with that without a ball on the tee and get them comfortable with it. Oh, okay, well, that's what you want me to feel. And then put a ball in the way, and you'll see <laughs> almost immediately they're going to start hitting the, the obstruction again, right, in the very start. And then you just encourage them. No, you're, you're doing fine. Just stay through here without hitting the obstruction. And, um, and, and I find this drill to be really fantastic for, for a lot of different reasons that we won't go into today. But, you know, uh, what, what happens with a lot of players that in this program – unfortunately is some of you right there's still a small percentage but some of you are just convinced that it's an elbow problem if i can get my player to steer their top hand arm different and so what most of these players are going to look like at the point of contact is their top hand arm is going to be real stuck and bent and whatever direction the forearm is pointing right at the point of contact the barrel is going to follow that right and that doesn't make sense on a ball sitting still Right, so what this drill encourages is this mechanism it has to flatten out. The barrel will always follow whatever position the top hand arm is in. It's an extension of the top hand arm, right? It's the closest thing. So if the if the top hand arm is stuck like this and it's some 90 degree position pointing up, the barrel's just gonna go over the top of the ball. And you don't want that. So this drill will help players uh, feel more range of motion and extension just because it's an extension of the the barrel is going to be an extension of that if i'm trying to avoid hitting the hit stick my top hand arm has to extend more in order to avoid hitting it right so i love this feeling um keep it simple it's not rocket science you can just start you know telling your player hey i want you to get through but i want you to avoid hitting the the hit stick i want the barrel and ball to work through instead of across right and again, I would encourage this with the exaggeration, just so players know when we're doing the exaggeration that, that it's not just go up to that, it's go through, then get up.